everyone. Welcome to ResearchMD.com. My name is Pramil Charyat. I'm a program director of uh, Internal Medicine Residency Program, Transitional Residency Program in the United States, uh, Southern Professor of Medicine, two large medical schools. Um, and today we are going to start all about endocrinology. We've been we're going to do a lot of lectures about endocrinology topic. Okay. In order to start that, what is the first thing we need to know? We need to know about which hormone. We need to know about which gland, first of all, which gland we need to know. What is this? Somebody read it loud. Pituitary gland. It's so complicated, all these hormones, the connection with the hypothalamus. So we're going to, in a nutshell, we're going to look at it, which hormone and uh, which kind of related and all those kind of things. Okay, so when you talk about hypothalamus, okay, hypothalamus is part of what? Limbic system. Okay, it's kind of associated. What are the other parts in the limbic system? You got thalamus or thalamus, you got amygdala and hippocampus. Okay, and they are involved in this memory, a lot of function. Hypothalamus also, what does it do? It's a um, thermoregulatory function. Okay, so after the, so this is a nice picture of the hypothalamus right here. And after hypothalamus, what we have is connected to the pituitary gland by this stalk. Okay, it's actually called the infundibulum. Now, so when we talk about the, now this is our pituitary gland. Let's talk pituitary gland a little bit, okay. Pituitary gland is kind of situated um, in the sphenoid bone. There's like a depression, I mean, in the cellular tertia region, okay. You can call that cellular tertia, where the pituitary gland is secreted. Pituitary gland is situated. Okay, so when you talk about the uh, cellular tertia, there's like a, you may also want to know a term you always hear like a radiology, you do an MRI and there's something called MT cellular tertia. Okay, what is MT cellular tertia? You got like sometimes what happens is, um, let's say if you have like a pituitary gland, you remove it, then there you will not see a gland or uh, that's going to look empty. Okay, let's say if you have uh, like some disease and the uh, pituitary gland is enlarged, you need radiation, right? And then that is destroyed, that also become empty because there's no pituitary gland there. Let's say if you have an infarction right there and then tissue get damaged, right? And then also become what? I mean, you know, become empty. That's called cellular tertia. Okay, and then there's the, uh, and that's what the secondary causes. What are the primary causes? Because you have this, sometimes you can have the CSF leak into the uh, cellular tertia and push up the uh, pituitary gland and create like, uh, um, you know, empty cellular syndrome. So remember, it's good to know the empty cellular syndrome. Okay, now, when we talk about the pituitary gland, if you look at the, it's around, uh, around one centimeter. I mean, you know, the volume, I would Say around like one centimeter, and it's pre it can produce. Uh, there's two major parts in the pituitary gland one is called posterior pituitary, and the other one is called anterior pituitary. Now, we're going to look at the posterior pituitary first. So, this is the posterior pituitary uh, structure right here. What happens is like it's a lot of neural structures coming from hypothalamus through the stalk and end up here. That forms the majority of the posterior gland, posterior pituitary. Okay, posterior is also called a neurohypophysis. Now, when you talk about the posterior pituitary, you need to know about two uh, two major hormones. Okay, which one are the posterior pituitary? Somebody tell me. Oxytocin. Oxytocin and ADH. ADH. Two important posterior pituitary. I think everybody know that, but we're just going to go over a little bit. Okay, let's start with oxytocin. The main thing we know about oxytocin is the childbirth, right? It stimulates the myometry of contractions and the baby get delivered, right? They use an oxytocin injection to stimulate uh, childbirth, like myometrial contractions and all that. So oxytocin is like very important. It's also milk letdown reflex, okay? It helps in releasing the milk where the baby can have milk. It helps in, so it's a letdown reflex. Everybody know that? Which hormone produces the milk? Prolactin. Prolactin, okay? So which will come back to that. That's not good. That's not a posterior pituitary hormone. That's an anterior pituitary hormone. So remember, there's the milk letdown reflex and the myometrial contraction childbirth that is oxytocin. It's secreted by posterior pituitary. Now the other major hormone is ADH, antidiuretic hormone. Okay, what happened in the antidiuretic hormone? Hypothalamus got osmoreceptors, okay? Continuously measuring the osmolarity of the blood. 
So <clears throat> let's say we have de dehydration, increased uh, uh, osmolarity. So what the hypothalamus, you know, send the signal to posterior pituitary to release ADH, okay? So ADH goes and act on which organ? Kidney, okay? And the kidney, and tell them to, as to reabsorb water, okay, to correct the situation. That's the main thing about the um, ADH. Now, ADH, um, it relate, I mean, increase water absorption, it reduce the osmolar, I mean, it regulates the osmolarity. Okay, tell me um, which conditions, like you have like decreased ADH, which uh, pathological condition decrease ADH? Diabetes insipidus. Diabetes insipidus. What is the usual symptom? Patient have like intense thirst, polyuria, inability to concentrate the urine, right? Because of lack of ADH, okay? So that's what one disease is you have to know that it's like decreased ADH. Okay, now what happens if you have increased? Give me one condition that's increased ADH. SIDH. SIDH, that's the most common cause of a uvolemic hyponatremia in the United States. So it could be caused by like tumor, slang, like you know, a brain from the, you know, the lung tumor and the brain tumor could like, you know, if I have to say, like can cause like, you know, SIDH. Okay? Now, when we talk about those, that's pretty much about the posterior pituitary. Okay, any questions on posterior pituitary? When we have anterior pituitary, always think about the releasing hormone. So we got the hypothalamus releasing all this hormone which affect on the anterior pituitary to release the other hormones. Okay, remember that. So on the top, we got the releasing hormone, the hypothalamus, and the other hormones uh, secreted by the anterior anterior pituitary. Okay, this hormone we're going to talk about when you talk about anterior pituitary is prolactin. Okay, very very important. What does the prolactin do? It increases the milk production in the mother, right? So when you talk about the prolactin, what hormones? In, I mean, stimulates it. Thyrotropin releasing hormone. Hormone, okay now when you come to inhibition like I mean is dopamine dopamine hit inhibit prolactin okay now the one thing also you need to understand is like prolactin come and inhibit GnRH okay when you gonadotropin, gonadotropin releasing hormone. So what happens when a prolactin, um, if there's increased prolactin, they inhibit uh, GnRH, so you're gonna have decreased LH and decreased FSH, so it's gonna be, you know, women's ovulatory cycle is affected, you can have uh, amenorrhea, that's like the other condition we just have to uh, worry about. Okay, now, so, the first hormone is done. Let's look at the second hormone. It's the growth hormone, okay? Growth hormone. What is the stimulation from the hypothalamus? What is it like? Growth hormone releasing hormone, okay? That stimulates the production of growth hormone. But at the same time, somatostatin can inhibit the growth hormone, okay? So, there will be some pathological condition associated with the growth hormone. Uh, gigantism. Gigantism. Acromegaly. Okay, what is the difference between gigantism and acromegaly? Somebody tell me. Gigantism is when it is produced in children. Okay, gigantism is actually when it happens in the children because, you know, children can go. That's in the growth phase. Um, and what happened in the adult? What is it called? Acromegaly. Because growth is already completed. So you're going to have like, you know, enlarged hand, those lot of things which we'll come back and talk about it. Okay. So remember the growth hormone right there. Okay. Now, next hormone we're going to talk about is the TSH. Right, so TSH is actually, um, I mean, you know, you have the TRH or thyrotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. Okay, all this remember, all this top means the releasing hormone for thyrotropin, uh, I mean, hypothalamus. So, hypothalamus release thyrotropin, thyrotropin releasing hormone, and they produce thyroid stimulating hormone, which is TSH. Okay, and that it acts on the thyroid gland to produce the hormones like what is a T3, T4, and all those kind of things. Okay, now the next hormone we're going to look at is what GnRH, that is gonadotropin releasing on um, uh, releasing hormone. This is the hypothalamus releasing hormone that produces LH and FSH. Okay, so. What happens is like um, when you talk about the ovaries, you got this initially you got the follicles, okay, ovarian follicles, and they that produce um, you know that produce estrogen, okay, and then the ovarian follicle become graphium follicle, and that kind of covers the um, ovum. And, uh, and then it kind of ruptures out, right? Once the ovum release, this graphene follicle become, you know, corpus luteum, and that produce 
progesterone. Okay, so you have to know the production of the so FSH stimulate initially the follicles in the ovary and that follicles kind of produce what estrogen okay and that follicle then become graphene follicle and then that covers the ovum and then once the ovum is released what happened to the graphene follicle become like a crumbled structure called the corpus luteum and the corpus luteum produces progesterone okay now also like when you talk about the other hormone we need to know about is the testosterone lh okay luteinizing hormone stimulate the Leydig cells of the testes to produce another male hormone which is testosterone okay remember that so we talk about lsh FH, and the last hormone we're going to talk about is the acth okay um, so you got cortico corticotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus, they produce like ACTH, um, which is actually corticotropes. And what does that um, ACTH do? Energy metabolism, permissive action because of the cortisol um, is affected, and then regulate the plasma volume because of the mineral corticoid activity. Okay, so in all in all of this. I think it's, um, it's important to know the understanding um, of the pituitary gland and how does it affect this hormone. Endocrinology plays like a very big role, unless you know everything about this hormone. So we're going to come back and talk about it. So sometimes it's best to know like a scenario we can kind of talk about. Let's think about hypo, let's say you're in a hospital, okay? So let's say like a CEO of the hospital is what? Let's say like hypothalamus. That is a, that is the hypothalamus. He controls it. Okay. And then you have the master gland, which is a pituitary. He can say like chief medical officer of the hospital, right? Just don't have too much power, but have some power. But the main person is the CEO, which is hypothalamus. And then you got the chief medical officer, it's the master gland. Then you think about all the doctors below as hormones, okay? That's the best way to kind of um, remember, okay? So remember hypothalamus as the CEO of the hospital, chief medical officer as the pituitary gland, and then you got all the other doctors kind of um, the hormones, okay? Again, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation. If you could please help us subscribe to our channel, greatly appreciate it. Thank you.